So this video is one of two extra lessons that goes with uh, chapter one for physics 12, uh, two lessons we often do at the end. Uh, this one here, we're going to uh, take our first look at some questions that I like to call Francesca questions. And uh, this is Francesca here. She's in an airplane going for a little ride. She's dangling her string. Um, the question actually comes from the textbook. Just kind of looking at it here. Um, it says, Francesca, who likes physics experiments, dangles her watch from a thin piece of string while the jetliner she's in takes off from John F. Kennedy Airport. Uh, she notices that the string makes an angle of 25 degrees with respect to the vertical as the aircraft accelerates for takeoff which takes about 18 seconds. Okay, great. So we're actually going to estimate the takeoff speed of the airplane just by watching the swing of that watch. And I'm um, sure this question here is actually specifically about this person named Francesca. Uh, but you're going to see this kind of situation show up in physics all the time. Um, it could be even if you're just watching maybe a helicopter carrying a firefighting bucket as it travels through the air. You'll notice that it doesn't hang straight down just as it continually goes through the air. Uh, Francesca's watch doesn't hang straight down during the time that she's accelerating. And all of these questions have something in common. You know, they're all about a string that's not quite hanging straight down. And uh, there's kind of a common plan of attack that we can actually use to deal with these questions. So we're just going to be filling in this little handout here, this little note template. And yeah, what have I got here? Lots of Physics 12 questions involve masses hanging on strings that are angled slightly. Um, so I'm going to actually show you on the two different pages here, two different ways to do this. You could maybe use a protractor like she did in the story. You can also do it by knowing the tension in the string. So in this first page, we know that the mass of the watch is a very beefy 200 grams. That's a pretty large watch, big Rolex or something. Um, but we're going to see if we can use that to figure out exactly what the acceleration of the airplane is. Then you could just do kinematics and find the speed. So I've got here all Francesca questions have something in common. The string's tension I'm going to say this, it has two jobs. Okay, it's going to be doing two different things at once. The, the vertical component, I'm going to call that T in the Y direction, tension in the Y direction. In all of our questions, we're going to see that it just holds something up. And then I want to keep these notes you know, very general so we can use them throughout the course. The horizontal component of the tension, Tx, I'm going to call it, I'm just going to say it does something interesting. You know, it could be it accelerates the watch for takeoff, or it could be it balances the force of friction for that firefighting bucket, or maybe in another chapter, maybe it's, you know, fighting some magnetic field force. Um, it, it, whatever it is, it's going to be something in that x direction that that Tx is going to be battling with. So in this story here, um, let's say that Francesca actually has a spring scale and she's noticing that the tension actually changes during the takeoff roll. Okay, so she's got the string, it's hanging at an angle. Classic Francesca question. Uh, let's go and look at the free body diagram for this watch during the takeoff. So there's definitely for sure going to be an MG going down, as there always is. You know, you could actually even figure out what that is because we're told the mass is 200 grams or 0.2 kilograms. So that ends up being 1.96 newtons. And then the tension. Um, in the story here, it looks like, you know, just off to the right there, it says perhaps we know the tension is 2.4 newtons. Notice it's bigger than the 1.96. Okay, so this is on the diagonal. So again, maybe this tension here, perhaps it's been told to us by that spring scale is 2.4 newtons. Now I'm going to break that tension up into two components. Traditionally, I always like to go over first, then up. Although this question with a smaller TX and a bigger TY kind of lends itself to maybe going up then over. It's not a big deal either way. Uh, maybe on the next page where we have the angle compared to the vertical, up then over works really well. Okay, so I've got this tension in the Y direction and then the tension in the X direction. And those two components in a two-dimensional way make up that 2.4 Newtons. So remember what we said, the TY, its job is to hold something up. So what I can guarantee you is that these two vertical forces, although they're different things, they're actually the exact same size. So this force here is going to be the exact same size as that 1.96 newtons. So that gives me some insight into how big that Ty is, which is really important because it'll help me find Tx, and I really need that Tx. Okay, so Newton's second law. Let's see if we can get F net equals ma to roll. Um, again, maybe we know that that tension on the diagonal is 2.4 newtons. So we could say, oh, okay, all right. How about this? 
Working with two-dimensional physics here, the tension at hypotenuse squared is going to have to be Tx squared plus Ty squared. So maybe we can get at this Tx through Pythagoras. So 2.4 squared is equal to Tx squared plus 1.96 squared. Doesn't take too long to solve this. Tx squared ends up being, I think, 1.9184, somewhere in there. And then Tx, after we take a square root, around 1.385 newtons. Okay, so now we can go and do f net equals ma. Notice what we've done, though, to find that Tx, that 1.385. You cannot get that 1.385 number simply by taking this 2.4 and subtracting the 1.96. We are subtracting it, but in a two-dimensional vector sense. Just simply subtracting numbers is just not going to work for you. Okay, well, our plan for this chapter has been to really work with good old F net equals MA, so I want to deploy that now. And then I stare at the picture and I try to decide, well, what is the net force in this picture? The two 1.96s just reduce each other to nothing, but we're left with that TX. So it looks to me... Like in this story, it's Tx that's actually going to make Francesca's watch accelerate with her down the runway. Well, I know that that Tx is actually 1.385. And we know the mass of her watch was that very large 0.2 kilograms. Quick division, this thing's over. The acceleration of this watch during that takeoff roll is 6.92 meters per second squared. So that gives you a, a neat way of finding that acceleration. And if you know how long she's actually in the takeoff run for, you can do an estimate of how fast the airplane actually takes off at. Believe it or not, it actually works fairly well. Um, you can try it in the airplane next time you're in one. You'll see things tip back quite nicely. Um, you'd have to have a spring scale, of course, to do it this way. So maybe on the backside, we'll do this with a protractor. Uh, the key thing, though, two-dimensional work there for that free body diagram trying to find out the TX. And the TX is actually what makes this thing accelerate sideways. Okay, well, let's... Um, do this again, but on the back page, we'll do it much like the question that's actually in the textbook. What if we know some sort of angle? Um, I'm going to go with a 30 degree angle, a little bit different than the one in the textbook. Uh, so she's got a protractor there measuring that angle compared to the vertical. Okay, at least that's how it was mentioned in the text. I think they said compared to the vertical. Let's take a look here. Yeah, with respect to the vertical. Okay, perfect. So that means the angle up in here, right, is that 30 degree angle compared to some vertical line. Okay, same plan as before. Let's go and draw a free body diagram and see if we can find out what that net force is. Now on this page, we know the 30 degree angle and much like the textbook, let's say we don't know what the mass of the watch is. All I could tell you right now is that that force, it would be mg. That's how you would calculate it. And then this larger tension that goes this way, I, I don't know what it is right now, I'm just going to call it T. It has two components. It's going to have a vertical component, TY. And it's going to have a horizontal component. I'm going to call that TX. And we've got that exact same angle forming. It's kind of that little Z-shaped alternate interior, I believe it's officially called deal where it's going to have to equal that 30 degrees. Now our goal is to do whatever it takes to try to find that TX. That TX is everything. It's going to be your net force. So how can we um, how can we actually go and get there? Well just like the other page we know that these two vertical forces are going to be the exact same size. That one there is going to be the same size as that one. That could help me wander over and find out that value for TX. So my, my goal really is to get my hands on that TX to see if I can figure out uh, the acceleration of this airplane. Okay, so really think of that as your goal. How do you want to get to that goal? Well, you could do Pythagoras like we did on the first page, but maybe over here we're going to do some trigonometry. So looking at that right angle triangle, I know something, I know info about TX. Sorry, I know info about TY, I meant to say, and I'm looking for TX. I'm kind of thinking tangent would be good because it ties those two things together. So how about this relationship? Tan of theta, where that angle is positioned, is Tx divided by Ty. Okay, so then if you want Tx, we can just maneuver that equation around a little bit. That would be like Ty tan theta. 
Okay, great. All right, here goes. Let's fire up fnet equals ma. And we can go and find this acceleration. So looking at the picture, it looks like the net force is actually tx. And it's going to make that mass accelerate. But right now, I don't know how big as a number that tx is. And I don't know what the mass is. Not a problem. I can actually change this tx and say, well, that is the same thing as being, okay, just looking at what's up above here, tx is equal to ty times tan theta. That's going to make that mass accelerate. Okay, a bit of a problem. I don't know what ty is, but it's really not a problem because ty is really just mg. So I have mg times tan theta is equal to ma. And here's where the beauty of the math shows up. It's actually mass independent. We don't even really care about what the value for mass is because it's actually on both sides. So this ends up being a remarkably nice, simple calculation. We can just go 9.8 times the tan, in this case, of 30 degrees is equal to the A. And it looks like the acceleration here is 5.65 meters per second squared. A little kinematics. You can find out the final velocity of that airplane as it's about to take off from the ground. Um, not too worried about finding that velocity. What's really important here is this idea that we're trying to find that TX. That TX is everything for you because it's the net force. So just do what it takes to carefully find that TX two-dimensionally. might be trigonometry like this one. It might be Pythagoras. But you're going to find you're relating it back to the TY and you know that that ty is equal to the mg. That's why you want to relate it back to it. So we're going to call all of those questions Francesca questions whenever you've got a string that's at an angle and the string is doing two different jobs. And we'll see it in a few different chapters.